Hello guys, welcome back to my channel for number three with me in the flight deck again today. We have Captain Masao from the uh, Day in the Life video, and he also appeared in the last part two of the video. Today uh, we'll be finishing up with the GNSS tutorials with part three tips and tricks. First, a disclaimer: we're cruising at 19,000 feet, non-critical stage of the flight. The autopilot coupled to the left-hand side. I am the pilot, not flying. So at the moment it's night time and uh, we're traveling from Nairobi to Zanzibar. As seen on the route here, we're buzzing uh, Garen, Okpol, and to Zanzibar HDZA. So now let's do some tips and tricks. These will help you. Uh, be a little more efficient with the GNSS and uh, give you a little inside look. So one of the many problems that we have is uh, knowing how much fuel is being burnt exactly since there's no digital counter here that will show how much is the fuel flow. We only have fuel used unlike uh, these digits where you can see the ITT661. We cannot really see what number it is at so we can only estimate so this looks like 310 and uh, this also looks like 310 so now there's a way we can get it accurately from the GNSS so the method of doing it we're on the progress page now this is the normal page so we go to menu MPC it's return and return again Let's go to param. This is the first one, the call up param, which is parameters. Just press that. And we go to param alpha call up number two. Now, this is the usual screen for it, just like that. So we can call up all the parameters that we see here, all of them can be viewed here. So since the rest of them have a digital counter, it's not that important. The most important thing is the fuel flow. So we can write the code F F R, which stands for fuel flow, right? Do that, stick it in one of the boxes, and we see the exact fuel flow of the right engine. <coughs> this is the, uh, the unit, kilogram per hour, and you're burning 302, 303. Same way, FFL. We can get the, for the left engine. And also here, there's, it can be a little difficult to get the NHNL, since there's actually two needles, you see. So we can get the NHNL just as the same way. So if we need the NL, just go NL right. Stick it there. And get the NL, which is 94.5. And you can see the NH for the right engine is 95.6. So we can also get the NL for the left. You'll see the captains mostly do this as they have to fill out the tech log with these digits. So this is the MPC basically. Other than, you can actually get all of the parameters, torque and everything. You just have to write the code but it's not really that important. All right, the next tip I want to share with you is uh, user waypoints. So there are some airports that uh, do not have a published approach into them, so it's mostly just visual. However, you can make your own approach by using the GNSS, using just one navigate that might be present at the airports. And sometimes you can just use the, you can even use the airport itself as a point. So let's take 
Zanzibar for example. We're going to Zanzibar and it'll be easier to explain this. So Zanzibar has an RNAV approach. So we have the runway here and you have Imviv, Imtom, Akpal, Udnun. So suppose we don't have any of these points and uh, we just have the airport. So now since we don't have the points, there is no way for us to plan our descents. No way to know how much, what height should be, uh, should we be in order to have a nice little profile. So the way we can do this is we can make imaginary points uh, for the approach. We can make shift, make our own non-precision approach into Zanzibar. So this is what the approach is looking like at the moment. So we're coming in from the south, Okpal, all the way to the runway 18. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the approach and I'm going to make my own approach here into it. So first things first, I'm going to go to heading mode. Captain, I'm going on heading. Heading select. So I'm going to just delete this approach. Go to arrivals, Zanzibar. Just put in runway 18 and it says descent path deleted. So, and I'm gonna change this to Garen. Runway 18. So, since we are clear direct, it's a little off. But uh, that's our point, we're going to beam it. So now we have runway 18. Now what I need to do is make a final leg and uh, make a base leg. For simplicity's sake, we will uh, make a point like Imbiv and we'll make one as Udnur. So we can, I'll show you how to make one for Okpal as well if you want. So uh, we have a navate in Zanzibar, Zulu Victor which is the VOR, which is on the runway, Suleviktu. So we can use that as our nav, uh, as our aid. So the way we do this, let me just zoom in here. So I can put in Suleviktu to begin with. Just stick that there. Number one, Tanzania. Now, I need something that is, this is Zulu Victor, I need a point that is around 5 miles or let's just take it just Inviv. So Inviv is 3.5 and, and 2.5 and which makes 6 miles away from touchdown. So I would put in the radial that I'm getting. So Zulu Victor, so to make it very simple, just imagine you're standing on the runway and looking towards Inviv and you just say what heading you're on. So basically if it's inbound is 176 if inbound is 176 then the other way around 176 plus 180 it'll be 356 so Zulu Victor 356 and I need it for 6 miles so you have your points slash distance and I would put this here so that'll be my inviv now let's make uh, let's make imtom as well so imtom would be the same let's just see the total distance 5 and 6 so it'll be 11 miles so Zulu Victor 356 for 11 miles. So we put that on top. There we go. And to make Udnur, now you need a little bit of trigonometry. So what we can do is we know Zulu Victor is here. You have your Imtom. Would 
you know this is 356 you want it to be 45 degrees off to get a nice base leg you know this is 11 miles and you know that Udnur from Imtom is 6 miles so to get that distance let's just do square root 6 squared plus 11 squared should be 12.52 let's take it as 13 for approximation and the radial would be 356 minus 45 which is 311 let's try it it's all trial and error until we get it exactly how we want it so we said 13 miles let's put it on top and let's put this here and let's remove the Zulu Victor because we don't need it take runway 18 put it there and execute let's see the pattern that we come up with so as you can see now it looked better if it was if we were a little closer but that is a base leg and we're going towards Imtom and then Imviv and now since we still don't have the uh, the altitudes we're still blind so we don't know how high we should be so what we can do is go to VNAV change our descent path a little bit let's put it since we usually descend on 170 uh, speed and at 3 degrees for an ILS approach usually so 173 degrees just execute that go back to legs and now we know that over the threshold we need to be 50 feet above the elevation the elevation for Zanzibar is 54 so plus 50 is 104 just put 0104 plug it there and execute that and we will get our altitudes for these points so just take it and plug it back and then keep doing that for the whole approach like that and again and execute and don't forget to change it back to get your original path 240 at 4 degrees which is our standard go back to progress and now you have your top of descent for the approach that you've made up so now this is this will be your non-precision approach into into Zanzibar I hope you understand the point of doing this I mean it will give you some guidance going towards an uncontrolled or doing an, a visual approach but with guidance of using GNSS now let me just quickly plug back the RNAV approach that we were initially clicked and yes one more thing if uh, your airport does not have a navate you can use the airport itself uh, to make the waypoints so suppose if uh, the airport code is HTDA you can just do HTDA and then with the radial and then the distance something like that and then put it on if you don't have navigate so next up I would like to tell you about the alternates Suppose you're flying uh, to, well, we're now flying to Kilimanjaro from uh, Dar es Salaam. Suppose you encounter something and you're like, I wonder how long it'll take to divert from our present position to another airport or another waypoint and what our ETA would be. 
as is very rare and it's not seen a quite a bit and it's not done by I think not a, like nobody does this but you can do this very simple technique to get the estimates uh, for the waypoint or the airport so, so we're going to Kilimanjaro the identifier is HTKJ and if suppose uh, we want to divert to Nairobi we can just put the identifier HKJK and just stick it in to the uh, destination and it turns to HKJK it says direction to ultimate you have your distance and your ETA direct and take, it also works with uh, uh, waypoints like GNSS waypoints suppose a lava stick that there and I guess <laughs> it's 3,000 miles away and the way to remove this is just to go to any other page and then come back and it disappears it's only for a reference so that's the other thing and the last one I'd like to show you is of no actual function or use in day-to-day -day operations but it's fun to it's fun to look through it uh, back in the early days uh, we used to is to have this sort of competition with the other pilots on who can have a very smooth landing so the way there's no way to judge it other than word of mouth but there is a way you can check the g-forces exerted on the flight at the time of touchdown so we can uh, get to menu and MPC previous return and return again this page and then there's a G meter here so we can have this G meter report so it gives you the August uh, the dates the time flight number the G's G's experienced by the flight so you can see landing 1802 we landed with 1.28 G's when we were on the ground so this was quite a positive landing actually and uh, usually a very very smooth landing would be around 1.05 or anything less than that around one basically the closer you can get to one the better but i've seen some figures like 0.98 and we just don't believe it also there are some there are some uh, suggestions some theories that this does not actually measure the landing force but it's actually the g-force of the flare right before touchdown so you can have it's not that accurate but it is a way to judge the landing amongst the pilots well that sums up the GNSS do let me know if you have any other questions regarding this machine but uh, this is the end of the GNSS series I'd like to thank Captain Calvin Masao who assisted me in uh, the filming of this video and also teaching me a few things of his knowledge please do uh, if you do enjoy the videos please do support the channel by subscribing and sharing with your friends and let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below thank you and happy landings